Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, small caps. We're going to take a look at the Russell 2000 and see what's happening with it. It's been a little bit weak here the last couple of weeks. Uh, and then we'll check in with the high yield bond fund and see what's going on with the dollar. All right, let's start off here with the Russell 2000. This is a weekly view. It was up 31.66 for the week. And right now, this is my bearish count on the Elliott Wave. We've got the high up here. Uh, uh, where it uh, topped out the week of, let's see, what is it? the week of August 26th. That's the same exact week that the NASDAQ did. And again, the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000 were ahead of the S&P, which was into late September, and ahead of the Dow, which peaked on October, the, around October 3rd, I think it was. Now, the one index that was way ahead of all of these was the NYSE Composite, that topped out in January of 2018. But right now we're focused on the Russell 2000. This is my bearish count, and this is the path forward. This is what I'm looking for. Let's uh, dive in and take a look at the daily picture. Here's the daily view. I need to line something up here. Okay, that's a little better. Now this is the same bearish count that I'm holding on, I uh, believe all the indices right now, and that is that we, uh, after a five wave move down, we've had a three wave, a three wave, and a five wave move up, okay? A three, three, and a five is a flat, and right now this is an expanded flat, okay? And so after this is uh, topped, which it appears that it has, uh, we'll see. Right now it's working its way down. Um, you know, I'm expecting this to come on down in an impulsive wave count. You know, if five wave move to the downside, that should take out the December lows. So here's the here's the first five waves. Then uh, this may not be all of. We'll just have to see how the waves, uh, you know, come out. What I'm looking for first is the five wave sequence of Manu Wave One. Okay. Then we're going to have five of those waves that will complete uh, Minor Wave Three. So. You know, you always you keep taking it to a lower degree, and there's always a five-wave structure. So let's go ahead and take a look at inside the daily view and see what's happening. So if we drill over here and take a look at the 65-minute chart, which is what I call my hourly chart, because it divides the day evenly into six bars, this is what I'm seeing right now. So I'm seeing what looks like four waves complete in that we are in the process of coming down in a fifth wave to complete that first Manu wave, okay, to the downside. So need to see this to continue pushing to the downside here, break these lows, this support in here around 1548, 1549, and continue to, to sell off into a fifth wave. So that's the picture on the Russell 2000. Let me go back to the daily. The other thing I was going to mention, actually, let me go to the weekly, uh, you know, last week I talked about the NASDAQ composite and I called the video bearish engulfing because that's exactly what we had on a weekly candle, a big bearish engulfing candle. Well, that was reality. That's exactly what we had. But the implications of that were potentially bearish. But what I always say, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a reversal candle or, you know, an engulfing candle like this one here. You have to have follow through, okay? Price action has to follow through. All this is, this is a big flag. It's telling you potentially bearish implications here, okay? Same thing that happened on the NASDAQ you know, last week. But did we get follow through? No, it didn't even break the previous, you know, last week's low. You know, it, the NASDAQ opened up and rallied the entire time. So, you know, it's... You don't bet the house. <laughs> I mean, you don't bet the house on something like that because it just has the potential, but you need proof. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at any of this kind of stuff. I mean, that's exactly what it is. They're signposts, okay? They're guideposts that pop up, little flags saying, hey, here's the potential, here's what's possible because this is what this is telling us. And, uh, and so that, therefore, you're on the lookout for it. Let's take a look at the high yield bond fund. Actually, before I go there, there is one other thing I wanted to show you over here. And let me pull up the moving average view. Okay, so here's the moving average view on the Russell 2000. I've got a 10 exponential, a 21 simple, and a 55 simple. Okay, right now we got this moving average cross to the downside. 
potentially bearish implications, but we've only had two, four, six days uh, with that moving average cross. Would like to see a few more days to kind of confirm that this momentum is underway, kind of like up here, it started to do it. But you know, you do get some fake outs. I mean, you can go back and find some times where we got the cross and then you just didn't get the follow through. So this is something and this same thing is happening on the Dow Industrials right now. But it's not happening on the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, I don't believe. We're not getting a moving average cross just yet. All right, so that's uh, now let's take a look at the high yield bond fund. HYG, it uh, was up eight cents on Friday, and you can see just a couple little doji candles in here. And uh, but it's in sync with the market. Okay, this is the what the market's been doing. Uh, you know, from a bearish perspective, uh, I typically like to see this lead and uh, and start to do something a little bit different, kind of lead the market. But right now, it hasn't been doing that. It's just really been staying in sync. It's basically been saying that the investors in the marketplace is risk on. OK, uh, so we'll watch and see if this starts to roll over. We got really close back here early in the week and then it just came back. Uh, but uh, right now we'll get the potential when you look at this potential for a little top up in here, potential little head and shoulders pattern. We'll see if it comes down and breaks this uh, trend line. Uh, but that's the picture. That's what's going on with the HYG. Let's uh, take a look at the dollar index. OK, here's the dollar index and it was down on Friday 0.23. And right now I have modified my uh, my wave count in here to say that wave two has ended with this uh, flat. OK, we've got this A, B, C flat and we call it a flat because B came all the way back up to the start of A. OK, so a three wave, three wave and a five wave move down here with C and I don't the thing I don't like about this is that this is very shallow for a wave two. Let me zoom back out. OK, this is very shallow for a wave two uh, and I'm measuring wave two as a uh, uh, compared to wave one in here. OK, and uh, I was really looking for it to come a little bit deeper, come back down. But then we started getting these overlapping waves in here and I was really looking for three waves and we're getting a five wave move. So. Right now, this is my preferred count until this starts to do something different and makes some other wave count evident. OK, I am leaning towards this being complete with wave two, that we are into a wave three and that we have wave one. And now we're doing intermediate wave one of three of of primary three. OK, and that we could be coming all the way back down here because let's just take a look. Where does two? compared to one, whereas here's 50 percent, here's 618 percent right in here. So it could come down a little bit further, but we've already come 50 percent at this low. OK, so we're down in that zone where it's come as far as it you know needs to, you know, from the standpoint of a wave two, but it could come even further. So continue to watch this. But this is the uh, latest picture, latest view I've got on the dollar index looking for this to potentially turn here and start pushing higher. And I'll feel a lot more confident about this overall wave structure when it takes out these highs. OK, you notice how it came right up to them. The high here was if I can get my thing lined up here, 97.71. Here we're 97.71 and here we are at 97.69 high. So we're right right there and watching to see if we come back up, turn and take out that high. All right, that's the picture on the dollar index. That's it for this week. If you felt like the video was helpful, hit the like button. And if you're not a member or <laughs> if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. And uh, if you'd like to get more information, head on over to, uh, and I don't have it in front of me here, head on over to joehenches.net or beyondthechart.com. Either one will get you to the website. Sign up for the free updates or check out the membership. Everyone have a great weekend and a great week.